Puzzle games always had a special place in my heart, particularly if their puzzles are hidden beneath the mask of lore and story. These types of games always save me from a world that in it, you don't need to think anymore about anything. They make me use my brain and I think that's the best gift a developer can give to a player. Although Capcom is pioneer in this genre with franchises like Resident Evil and Onimusha, the game we're gonna talk about is not made by them. Machinarium is a point and click game in a rusty world with derivatives of steampunk subgenre, where everything there is robotic and mechanical. A world based on pure logic and mathematics. A world that makes you have a taste of rust and metal. By the way, only Musha fans, if you're out there, I love you and please befriend me so we can talk about this masterpiece. Hello folks, Old Soul here and today we talk about how Machinarium changed the meaning of logic. If you enjoyed, it would be great if you don't let my channel go rusty like Machinarium's world by hitting the like button and subscribing. Thank you. The game talks to us in three different languages, which is colors, puzzles, and the tail. So first things first, Machinarium is set in a world of scraps. It's very important to know that although metals are the dominating theme in this world, there are also other stuff here which are considered as garbage, like plastic, spool, tissues, and old cans. What's more important is that even the robots are almost scraps. They're no different than their environment. The falling society of them chewed and spitted them and now they're a bunch of scraps just like our modern world. The other big theme in this game is rust. The orange-brown color used in most parts of the game tries to tell us something, that the world has stopped moving. It has been in halt for a long time. If you think about it, most of the game's characters are not doing anything. They all want something, but none of them even tries to achieve it. Like these three musicians. They all nagging about not having an instrument, but still not doing anything about it. Or this guy. Someone has stole his record player, so he's just sitting there being sad. He won't try to get it back, nor does he get over it. In a world that has come to a standstill, a little robot struggles to reach his goal. The beating heart of the game. What I like about this game is that there's only one way to get past an obstacle. It's like binary code and it suits the robotic theme. It's either 0 or 1. There's nothing in between, so you should be really precise. And the puzzles are intertwined in a beautiful way that you can't skip any of them. You have to do them all. There's a certain style in the puzzles and it's them being educational. Most of them are based on some science and solving them gives you an understanding in that field. For instance, this one teaches you about electrical circuits, or this one is about fluids movements. If you didn't draw complex graphs for this puzzle, then you've probably solved it by accident. But I hope you realize the beauty of this masterpiece and how closing one valve changes the flow direction in the entire grid. There are two kinds of puzzles in this game. They're either room to room, as in you have to solve every puzzle in one room before you go to the next, or they're somewhat open world like this town. Multiple puzzles are connected to each other to create a big hole. This is another cool thing about this game. We don't really know what we're doing and what good the puzzles do. They're part of something bigger that we don't understand at the time. We don't know how helping this guy can be useful or what's under this hatch, but we trust the flow of things to carry us to a better place. That's how a moment like this happens. When you're like, oh that's why I carried this vegetable around all this time. It was for this other witch. <coughs> never mind. This is another way of saying change is always good especially if the world has come to a halt. We have to look at this one from two angles. First, the story. So the game's story is pretty simple. We control a robot named Joseph who has been bullied by three other robots and wants to save his girlfriend and the city by neutralizing a bomb. There's not much more to it on this side except some points. First of all, there's no currency here. The only money we see throughout the game is this coin and if we assume that this is a post-apocalyptic, post-human world, then these coins are part of their legacy, what they left behind. There are many more humane things in this game that we'll talk about in the next chapter. But what I'm trying to say is that in this world, instead of money, they do things for each other. It's like a weird trade. You do that for me, then I do this for you. It really shows how robots think. They don't use money because their brains don't work like human brain. The other point is that it seems like they've lost their meaning. They lack a purpose and except a few of them, the others are just hanging around. Well, they're robots. They can sit in one place for hours to no end. They don't need to eat or drink or go to the bathroom. The only downside is that they'll rust as they did. So maybe they concluded that this is the way of life. It's all pointless and without a purpose, they can pull the brakes on this world. The second angle is the lore. We absolutely don't know anything about the roots of this world, but I think there are some hints about what happened. Remember when I said this is a post-apocalyptic world? Well, I have a few reasons for it which starts from here. Call me delusional, but I think this machine that makes plants grow is actually a failed project by humans, a desperate struggle to survive. It's the same old tale of people destroying the earth. 
the human society was probably an industrial one as they made all these sentient robots to work for them. But they also screwed it all up and the life on earth was not possible anymore. Whether by polluting the air or something entirely different. They tried to revive the plant life by this device but something went wrong because as you can see, except some ivy, there's almost no plant in this world. It's all rust and rubble. Or maybe it was a success, but it didn't save them anyway. So either they flew from earth to seek a better place or they all went extinct and left this world for their robots. The robots whom without humans have no purpose to live anymore. There are other proofs of human presence. The obvious one being the toilet. You can make Joseph sit on them and he even pushes himself to do something that he has probably seen his overlords the humans do but nothing happens as robots can't defecate that way. The religions are another human footprint in this world. There's one single church for all the religions which is not humane at all because these believers pray under the same roof and won't try to kill each other. But if you take a close look, you can see two of these religions are from us. This guy is Jewish and there's also a crescent which is a sign for Muslims. I'm not really sure if the robots even understand the meaning of religions, but they obviously inherited them from us. If that's true and these machines were created to help people, then I think it makes sense that they are what they are now. They were created for simple purposes like cleaning the floor or unscrewing a valve but no one taught them how to live, how to love or how to enjoy. So when the humans left, they ran out of their usefulness. So what's even the point of trying to find a battery? Why should I go looking for an instrument? When you put a piece of iron in a place for too long, it rusts. Machinarium tells us the perils of stacking in a place, feeling sorry for ourselves and rusting away. If you enjoyed, please help my channel by hitting the like button on this video and subscribe. Thank you and as always, be safe friend, though you dare go or though.